Hey, it's Kevin. Let's talk about our second of three quality of service challenging topics. This topic is on weighted random early detection or weighted red. Think of weighted red as a congestion avoidance mechanism. We're trying to avoid congestion in an output interfaces queue. Think of it this way. Imagine a router has a relatively high speed LAN connection coming into it, maybe at a gigabit rate, maybe fast ethernet, but we're coming in off of a LAN and we're trying to go out on a wide area network link, maybe a T1. Can you see the big speed mismatch? We're coming in much, much faster than we're going out of the router. This speed mismatch could cause traffic to back up inside the router. What does the router do with this excess traffic? Well, the router is going to allocate some memory called a buffer or a queue to store up those extra packets. And then when bandwidth demand dies down on the WAN, the router is going to take those packets out of the queue and send them on the WAN. As a metaphor, think of it this way. Imagine that the router's queue is a lot like this cup. If we have traffic coming into the cup, and by the way, I have a hole cut in the bottom. If we have traffic coming into the cup, it's coming in a little bit faster than it's draining out of the cup. But over a period of time, we still have traffic going out, and if I cut off the water supply, the water eventually drains out. This is just like lots of traffic going into the router's queue, the traffic dies down, the router continues to send the traffic out on the wide area network. However, if we have a continual burst of traffic, eventually we're going to get to the point where, you guess it, the router's queue is going to start to overflow, it's going to start to draw packets. This phenomenon of the router dropping packets is called tail drop. Tail drop is when we drop packets because the router's queue is full. And this tail drop is bad for a couple reasons. Number one, the traffic that did make it in the queue, if the queue was nearly full when the traffic made it in, it might be very near the top of the queue. It might take a really, really long time for it to get out of the queue. So that's one bad thing. But there's something even more insidious that deals with the way TCP works. TCP uses the concept of a sliding window. For example, a TCP flow might start out by sending a single segment. And if it gets an acknowledgement of that segment back, it can double it. It can send two segments. And if it gets an acknowledgement, it can send four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, and on and on. It exponentially grows in the number of segments it's going to send before it expects an acknowledgement. Well, once a flow drops a packet, one thing that can happen is that flow goes into TCP slow start. Its window size crashes back down to one segment. And there are different ways that this can work, but that's one way it can work. It can go all the way back down to one segment. And it's going to have to start growing from there. And when it gets to one half of the original congestion window size, it starts to grow linearly and instead of exponentially. That gets into some of the math that we don't need to talk about today. But what I want you to understand is, if every TCP flow simultaneously goes into TCP slow start, it results in a very, very inefficient use of bandwidth. Some literature calls it TCP synchronization or global synchronization. And this can, again, result in a very inefficient use of bandwidth. So what weighted red does is this, or let's back up and talk just about random early detection first. Random early detection is going to define a couple of thresholds. On our cup, let's say that we have a small hole down at the bottom. This is going to be our minimum threshold. We've got a larger hole up at the top. This is going to be our maximum threshold. And you can see that when we start to fill this with water, traffic is going to, or water is going to start flowing out of that bottom hole when we get to a certain depth. And if it keeps growing, it keeps growing, it keeps growing, eventually the water level is going to reach the top hole, and pretty much everything's going to pour out there. No matter how fast I'm pouring water in, it's all going to go out that top hole, which is the maximum threshold. Now let's think about what that means when it comes to the router. It kind of reminds me of my favorite Star Trek movie, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Do you remember the scene? It's near the end of the movie, and Spock has gone down, I guess, to main engineering. Ricardo Montalban is Khan. He's damaged the Enterprise. There's this big radiation leak. And Spock goes down and he fixes the leak, but in the process he becomes blind. 
And Kurt goes down to see what's going on. And Spock is blind and he bumps into the glass and he talks to Kirk and he says, ship out of danger. And Kirk says, yes. And they go on to have this conversation where Kirk is asking him, why did you do it, Spock? Why did you give your life to save the Enterprise? And Spock says something like, don't grieve, Admiral. It's logical. The good of the many outweighs the good of the few. And then Kirk says, we're the one. That's what Red says. Random early detection says the good of the many flows outweighs the good of the single flow. So random packets are going to be dropped so that all the packets, all the flows, don't have to go into TCP slow start, resulting in global synchronization or TCP synchronization. That's the way that RED, random early detection, works. However, with RED, the challenge is it's random. We don't know if it's a high priority packet or a low priority packet that's going to be discarded. In other words, we don't know the priority of the packet that's going to be coming out of this bottom hole. It's a random packet. Cisco enhances RED with something called a weighted random early detection. With weighted random early detection, the router can pay attention to the priority marking on the packet, and it can set a different minimum threshold. In other words, we can have a different bottom hole or, or top hole if we want to for different priority values. Let's take a look at it this way. Let's say the bottom hole as it exists right now is for a priority marking of AF for assured forwarding. Let's say it's going to be 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, or 4, 2. When it comes to assured forwarding markings, Anything that ends in a 2 has a higher drop probability than anything that ends in a 1. So we might have a lower hole cut for the lower priority traffic. This is going to be for, we'll say, AF132323. And 43. By the way, this is how it works. They all have the same drop probability. And then we've got another hole that's less drop probable, and it'll be anything that ends in a 1. So AF11, 1, 1, 2, 1. Huh, the cup is wet, so it's not marking really well. 3, 1, or 4, 1. By having these different minimum thresholds, what we're able to do is start to drop the lower priority traffic a little sooner than the higher priority traffic. Again, the overall goal is we never want this queue to fill all the way up. That leads to delay for those packets that just barely made it in the queue. And if we start to overflow, if we start to have tail drop, that's where we run into global synchronization. So weighted red is going to give us these different thresholds. The math behind this defines a red profile for different priority markings. So let's go to the whiteboard right now and uh, talk about how the red profiles work. Here we see the math behind the scenes. These are the default red profiles for the assured forwarding of DSCP per hot behaviors. Specifically, AF values of AF1323343, they have a minimum threshold of 24 average packets in the queue. AF12223242, they have a minimum threshold of 28. And AF11213141, those values have a minimum threshold of a 32. For all of them, they have a maximum threshold of 40. And as soon as we exceed that maximum threshold, we jump from a 10% probability of discard to a 100% probability of discard. And when you configure this, you can specify the minimum and maximum thresholds for different values. You don't directly specify what in this case is 10%, the drop or probability at the maximum threshold. That's determined by the MPD, the Mark Probability Denominator. The math works like this. The probability of discard at the maximum threshold is 1 divided by the MPD. So, for example, if we had an MPD of a 5, the probability of discard at the maximum threshold would be 20%, 1 divided by 5. That's going to wrap it up for QoS Challenging Topic number 2.